Washington, D.C. Charles Dickens called it a city of magnificent intentions. I know it to be more of a cesspit of magnificent corruption, a tumor on the rotting corpse that is this once great country. The name's Harry Wright, Private Eye. I call this city home. But unlike most homes, there's no record in the living room, no pumpkin pie baking in the oven. Instead, the only thing you can hear is a taxi driving a congressman to a high-priced escort. And the only thing you can smell is the rotting corpse of a journalist who got too nosy, wafting in from the Potomac River. I see this town for what it truly is, not the pinnacle of civic discourse, but a rotting corpse. Uh, hey Harry, could you maybe not put your laundry in my basket and just like do your own? I was enjoying my evening alone when suddenly a client arrived. Unannounced. I could tell from the moment she walked in. Hey, you can't smoke in here. Seriously. I could tell from the moment she walked in she was a real femme fatale. Not the kind of girl you bring home to mommy and daddy. What the fuck? Are you even listening to me? Harry, listen. I let you stay here when Katie kicked you out because so you had nowhere else to go and I felt bad, okay? But it's been two months, you're not paying rent. Who was this mysterious stranger? And how did she know about my beloved Katie who was totally going to forgive me any day now? Suddenly, my night had gotten a lot more interesting. Are you doing that film noir thing again? We talked about this. I mean, it wasn't like I had done anything bad. Sure, maybe I had flirted with her sister a little bit, but it's not like anything happened. Katie's way hotter than her sister anyway. Surely she would see that soon and take me back. I want you to move out. What the? So my story begins with a case as puzzling as a jigsaw. Where would I sleep? Did I have any friends left? Why do I engage in such self-destructive? Why not, Katie? Because you hit on my sister. It was just a joke. So many questions.